and calling them in accordance to how late they came or early they came. So this is Seva Kumar came first, Mr. Pranav Rajan Rai and Jogenda. So we are very honored to have all of them here to discuss a life in art, the legacy of KG Subramanian. that he belongs to that generation of artists who 
began their career in the late 40s, almost with our independence. And probably amongst those artists, he is not only one of the few who are still with us, but probably the one who is producing the most significant work. Pressing on
be the Gambia movement and later through his art training at Shantani Gizan with Rabindranath and his ideas. Now, during this phase, he also read people like Kumaraswami much before he came to Shantani Gizan. Then when he came to Shantani Gizan, there was someone like Nandala who kind of was trying to put the <laughs> ideas of Kumara Swami into action. And he saw that behind these practices and theorizations of art were also the ideas in some sense of Gandhi and Tango supporting such involvement in the area of culture. And sometime back when he was asked about what to mask these two people out, he had said that he began his life in the yuga of Gandhi and Tagore, and therefore they couldn't even escape them. But he said what really marked them out was that they had a large answer, or they sought a large answer to even small problems. Now, in the area of arts, I think Sudhamanin was one of those artists who also tried to seek large answers to even small problems. So I think this is something. So it allowed him to think in terms of a larger perspective on one rather than in terms of one's own creative work. Because an artist faces problems which are related to his own creative work. And using that occasion, not to just solve that, that immediate problem, but to rethink the issues of art on a larger perspective. That, I think, was the second aspect that makes it stand out. Following from this, he obviously tried to develop a larger spectrum of practice for himself. Now, it was just not a spontaneous happening, but it was also somewhat planned that it was, I mean, planned in the sense not of everything being worked out, but there was always this effort to expand his own horizon and the horizons of his practice. Now, because when most of his contemporaries focusing on the issues of originality, try to narrow down their expression to what a particular style allowed them to do, I mean, Subramanian chose to put a kind of uh, balance between what one might say self-expression and communication. Now, this was also something that probably someone like Nandala allowed or uh, brought into his mind. So this kind of self-expression and communication being complementary <coughs> rather than, again, opposites, I think this was the third important thing that you notice in Subramanian's work and which probably allowed him to kind of expand his horizons much more. <coughs> Now, as an artist who wanted to kind of work in this whole range from communication to self-expression, he also tried to develop a personal language rather than 
had passed time. And he realized that, I mean, to do so, one had to take advantage of the physical qualities of materials and tools one used. And also, probably, try to develop a language which was not too skill intensive. It probably needed a lot of thoughtful use of visual elements, visual language, but it was not terribly skill intensive, which tends to narrow down the possibilities. And it also probably, I mean, an extremely skill intensive kind of style, which might be allow you to kind of uh, lead to more precise statements, but at the same time, it kind of takes away the possibility of being more suggestive, more evocative, and a more flexible language which can probably always need your help, the viewer's help, to complete itself, to come, I mean, to in all what the famous art historian called, called the beholders share. That is, if you consider that to be a part of the language you are using, just as the, the material quality of the things you use, your paper, your pigment, whatever you are using. Now, an artist trying to take both these aspects into consideration probably can have a language which is much more flexible. And I think this was the full thing. And the final thing that marks him out, in a sense, was that what today might look a little old-fashioned way of doing things. He tried to keep his art non-professional because something which, when you become a professional artist, you are determined by a certain idea of art. And the idea of art is bound to change. And the parameters of professional success will change with it. So, I mean, when you go to an art college and you want to take up the kind of thing you have a certain concept of art which guides you that you will try to gain those skills which will help you develop those concepts of art and in a sense you also then I mean limit yourself by those promises but if you think that Art is a tool for knowing oneself. If you think that art is a tool for knowing oneself in relation to the world one is living in, then probably you are less controlled by these professional ideas of art, which would keep shifting anyway. So I think these are the five points that marks him out and probably helped him to have this long career in art and still produce some of the most exciting paintings at the age of 19. Thank you. Thank you, Shiv Kumar. Uh, uh, I'd like to, as Sibar himself has suggested, that as a viewer, You to have a room. Artist invites your room to reduce the gap of communication between the artist and the viewer. So, uh, taking cue from this cue from him, uh, I would like your suggestion whether uh, we should 
discuss the points raised by Shikhova now or we come back to these points after we have listened to uh, Jovin Chaudhary first. It's your, I'll go by your suggestion. I suggest let like Jovin now also give his views and then, then we can discuss. Jovin Chaudhary. Greetings to everybody. Actually, I am not a, an art critic or an art historian like Shiv Kumar who is working on particularly on K.G. Subramaniam for a long time, since probably when he was a student of Kalamur. I think he is so much attached to uh, uh, Manida, K.G. Subramaniam, that I think he can probably write another 10 books mm -hmm. on him in few months. So, 